So this video is all about testing this motor here, the Marl M40. This is a test bike, it's not really about this bike. The basic specs of the motor are, it's an 850 watt peak power, 250 watt nominal, also 105 newton meters of torque, 800 watt hour battery in the down tube, top tube display, full color display. We've also got the ability to connect it to an app, uh, however, with this bike, you don't need to if you want to change the mapping of the motor. The weight of the motor is 2.5 kilos, in line with all the other motors out there. So it's a full power motor, semi lightweight in the sense of it's lighter than others. Uh, a compact design, the battery is in line with other compact design batteries. This is a 48 volt system. Main advantage of 48 volts is you have less derating likely to happen, so the battery doesn't heat up as much, mainly. Okay, don't forget it's winter. Don't forget the channel supported by Liat. Go and check out their Hydra Dry lineup. This is the, one of their rain jackets. It's pretty comfortable. Back to the video. It's pretty wet, but that doesn't stop me riding this. The perfect time to test traction. Yeah, give you a bit of a feedback and a rundown on how the software works on this bike as well as the uh, actual feel on the trail on some rocky sections. We've ridden it a bit before, we've done a bit of a test, but I thought we'd go in a bit more detail. So one thing I want to get clear about this bike is the fact that it has this feeling to the software, which is more advanced than any other motor on the market. And that's because this thing has only just been launched on the market, let's say. Ooh. I'm barely having to pedal, whoa. You don't, I'm reducing the pressure on the pedals here and the motor's slowing down. That tells me it's not cadence based. Ooh, this is really, really wet, slippery conditions. And it's in fact, interesting to see how much this bike grips or doesn't grip. And we're gonna see that on this next section. potential energy there is under me. At the immediacy of putting your foot on the pedal, it's like I put my foot on the pedal and it's always there. In that section there, I just, it's torque. I've got my foot, I'm holding back. But as soon as I put my foot on the pedal, just even a little bit, the motor's got that low down torque to support. I haven't felt many motors which feel like that. I mean, this is like the latest software basically. So you can't get that kind of motor control and response out of any other system. Whoa such fun here's amazing where it rocky shoot loads of grip fantastic look at it up we go dead stop and here we are at the technical section which i'm now going to talk through so i'm going to show you the difference of the software tune how to tune the software on this bike so with a mild motor one of the things i think is fantastic about this system is you don't need an app if you don't want to use one so let's call it a data safe bike. It doesn't know where you live. It's basically for you, your bike. You press the power buttons together. The first tune we're gonna do is where everything's at 100%. Uh, I'm gonna have the peak power at 600 watts. As you can see, you press the two power buttons here on the remote and it drops you into the menu. So I can already feel a soft dirt with lots of grip. I'm not trying to win the race here. <laughs> really wet conditions. The grip is amazing. The motor control is really impressive. This is steep, tight, rocky, and also now muddy. And I have to say, the software keeps the motor no misbehaving. So let's go and do it now with everything set to 150%. Right, we're into the settings and now I've done all the changes necessary. We're at 150%, so that means everything's maxed. Okay, the motor is way, way more responsive, but still controlled, but I have to brake. I can feel the overrun, Whoa, slippery, <laughs> too much power. Basically, the overrun is, uh, is doing a lot of the effort I can feel the kick down boost, but actually this is a good opportunity. It's wet here, it's quite steep. So let's see how we get on. Let's go. Yeah, it's really impressive. 
Okay, what's really interesting about this, no matter the fact that I've got a lot of power and there's definitely more, more motors more responsive, I still have control, which is really impressive. And it, the control feels different to all the other motors I've tried. I think it's something to do with the fact that the, the traction is measured by a multipole sensor, maybe, but also it's the way it delivers the power. It's easily the best delivery on the market so far. It's not the most powerful, the most rapid. I think the Bosch CX Race 6R has that, has a little bit more rapidity on the pedal response, but this thing is definitely a more advanced version of whatever else is on the market. Right, this is a tricky point here. So what we've got here is multiple S-bends up, and we've quite a slippery, steep bit at the top. And this is where we really get to see the low down torque and the torque response of this motor. Now, this is where I find the real differences between the bikes and the bike motors, especially. This is like the wettest it's been for a long time. I haven't ridden in this much rain since last winter. Traction is important, especially today. So. Okay, that's really interesting. the motor I just did it there I put my foot on the pedal and I could feel I just did a little bit and the motor responded immediately really good torque control through the leg really impressed oh, slippery as you can see wet roots you're always going to slip there's no such thing as perfect traction but the biggest thing I noticed here is how it gives you the power definitely you feel the motor responding to micro inputs of torque from your legs. You just put a tiny bit of pressure from the pedals and the motor responds. If I compare this here to the Avanox and also the Bosch CXR Ace, they're all three different systems and this one definitely feels like the most advanced uh, with the most response coming from the CXR and the Avanox is like, it's got a lot of power, but it feels like you're just you're not controlling it so much. It's all about can you do the settings in the computer right so the motor does that for you without any stress. I think that's a real difference that you notice. This is all about organic, under your leg control. And we're back on the bike. I mean, I'd expect it because it is the latest motor to be launched, but I don't think, unless you've got one of these motors, you're really gonna know how it feels you can guess but and i know brands bench test against each other but the bike by the way is fantastic i would definitely buy this bike take this over an amflo any day also over t-wing probably take it over any other bike that i've seen recently i'm gonna have to ask if they can send me one to have for a long-term test because the grip is amazing here last corners Slow, responsive talk. Bit of extended boost, even track standing at the end. It's motor. Somebody flying up there. How can they see anything? At 500 meters in the cloud. First of all, the climb. This climb has everything you need. It's steep in the right places. It's got tight switchbacks. It's missing some extremely rocky climbs, but I don't think many people ride those conditions that often. What it has got, it's got all those things which test this motor to the max. I will say one thing. I do need to detune the max power mode by about 10 or 15%, because although it's good when I'm on the corners and I've got my pressure on I'm having to hold back a bit because the motor's wanting to go more so I've got to brake a little bit so I can probably tune that down in the software which is and I don't need the app I can just do it on the bike there and then and for a motor like this at a bike at 22.5 kilos I think that's what we weighed it at uh, basically we've got really an impressive beast here I'm uh, looking forward to getting more time on this bike in better conditions as well okay let's just do a short descent nothing crazy because the trail conditions are appalling. The main idea is, does the motor rattle? And the answer is no, it's dead silent. This whole bike is 
actually quiet. Very maneuverable, very trail or mountain, bit of enduro if you want. Very, very good into the corners. Wow. Back to home for a conclusion. As you can see, it's a really exciting system. See the other motors out there do compete, but this for me is probably I'm not gonna call it the best because obviously it is a new system. Uh, I think that there's probably some improvements to be made, mainly with regards to probably the power cutoff. Once you get past uh, 25 kilometers an hour, it probably needs a little bit of a softer ramp off there. But apart from that, overall, you know, the battery design, it's not a fast charging system. To fast charge, the batteries have to charge at more than four amps. This charge is at four amps but it does charge at 54 volts, so that's worth remembering. I think this bike is also the most data secure bike on the market because you don't need to connect it. Although you have an app, you don't need to connect to an app. You can adjust everything without an app, and I think that's pretty cool. As regarding how it rides, well, as we saw, you know, it is very much centered on an analog and uh, organic feeling coming from the legs. No digital settings really involved, apart from just changing the parameters of the motor. I will have probably one more video on this because I've got to get send this bike back very soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks everybody, bye.